When was the last time you saw a really cool, clean EG with a Type R motor making 200 wheel horsepower? This might be one of the cleanest ones I've seen in a while. This belongs to a good friend of mine. He's been prepping this car to come here. He's had the full paint job done, but it was already a very, very clean car. This is a Civic VX. If you're not familiar with this one, it's one of the lighter body of the EGs. He's supplying the engine. We built the engine. I'll show you that along the way, what we did to it, did a little bit of a freshen up. We're gonna install the engine and a few parts. When did you see an interior like that in the last? 10 plus years obviously we've been working on these cars since we're new but to see one this nice it does have a different steering wheel but everything else is staying the same i'm headed to the bottom of the bottle i've been drowning i've been floating away so now the block is cleaned out, freshened up, we rehoned it. We're using the factory Type R pistons, using brand new OEM rings. We did have the head completely rebuilt and shaved five thousandths. We're about 11 and a half to one compression. So we're doing the full Skunk 2 valve train. Uh, the Tuna 2 cams, very, very reliable, very OEM style cams, a little bit more aggressive than Type R. More power before and after VTEC with a real aggressive changeover. Engine's completely freshened up. We're going to cut the intake manifold open, run a 70 millimeter throttle body, basically clean up the intake manifold, open up the ports, and make it flow a little better. That's not even enough for one runner of a, like a K20. I want to get you guys a quick weight on this. These are the lightest wheels I remember. I think the wheels were about nine pounds or 10 pounds, something like that. Let's get a weight. 25.9 with a tire. So if you have been in the hobby game as long as us, you've done this and you've experienced this. You also didn't realize they don't always come. <laughs> All right, you know a little trick. Get ready. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of LHT Olympics. This is something that's been going on for 20 plus years. What we do is randomly take all parts and see if we can throw them in the dumpster. So we've got four shocks, two opponents, two versus two. Here is going to be the Coney Yellow Shocks and Skunk 2 Springs. Customers supplied all this. It's been years and years since we've done this combination, so it's always good just to lay everything out, go through the instructions, make sure you assemble it exactly how it should be. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's always best just to go over the instructions so you don't have to do it twice. These do have the extra machined ring for the front ones. He supplied the clutch. We're using the factory Type R flywheel that came on it. so. Exeti, pressure plate and disc, pilot bearing. The bearing that comes with the Exeti kit is still just a generic bearing. Even though it's got an Exeti box, this is the bearing. We just took a close look at it. It's a generic bearing. It has no name on it. I wouldn't put this in anything. I definitely recommend the factory OEM release bearing right here. This is the part number. I'll take this out. It says made in Japan. I'm gonna show you this is made by Nachi. You see the words Nachi. Japan. This is the best bearing I know of. This is the only bearing I would use on any car that comes in the shop. Clutches on. 
This transmission was just freshened up by Neil. Uh, he kind of went through it. It's a Type R transmission, as you see. Factory limited slip. You can see all the way through it. If it's not a limited slip, there's usually a bar across there. I'm gonna put the new release bearing on it, clean all this up, put some fresh Honda Euro grease on there, and then we'll install it. A lot of people have concerns about this in here, by the way. So many people think that you should clean this off. If it's not dripping and it's not loose and it's not gonna end up in the clutch, usually better to leave this on because this is a bit of an environmental hazard. It's got the clutch material in there, which most cases it's got uh, materials that you don't want to be breathing or uh, mix in with anything and your oil companies if you mix that and put it in there if they check your oil usually uh, they'll reject it they don't want it because it contaminates everything they have I can't remember somebody told me what it was so if there isn't any major flakiness or wet in there it's usually best just to leave that alone and not disturb it a man of options right there so we sell a ton of these bearings in the store for the S2000 idlers. Well, I'm 99% sure it's the same one as this. I think I did say that it is on a past video. I'm going to go ahead and replace it and see it for myself. This is a B-series tensioner. So we're going to verify that this works if you buy one of these. I'm going to verify all the numbers, but that is, that is the right size. So this box and belts might be 25 years old. This is something I acquired and built up over the years of doing swaps. What I would do is just dig through the belt, find the belt that fits, either read the number off it or measure the belt and order a brand new one. So these are all like test fit belts. So of course the alternator we know what size that is because it's essentially just ITR, but whenever you're doing hybrid AC systems, it's sometimes a bit of a, a guess. You put it on, set the adjuster where you've got the maximum uh, adjustability, put the belt on and go from there. I gotta say, I'm kind of shocked that it fits as good as it does. This is the Revel. I don't know if they bought Tanabi or Tanabi sold it to them, but it's basically the remake of what Tanabi is to do. So far, it fits probably the best I've seen in a long time. Almost every exhaust we get, we pull it out of the box, install it, then take it off and cut it and modify it to fit. This actually does pretty darn good. If you've never seen this, it eliminates the Honda main relay, which is basically like a double relay, and it's a proprietary relay. The beauty of this is it now converts it to just this regular relay. It's a 40 amp relay. It comes included in the kit, but you can get this anywhere. If you're in the middle of nowhere, everyone carries this relay. It's the most generic relay to power lights and accessories, that kind of thing. So GDI, check them out. I would seen one of these in a long time, and uh, this is brand new in the bag front lip for an EG. This should look pretty cool. This has the cut open into manifold. I think I showed it in the video, but we're running S2000 injectors. So it's an OEM injector with a little bit more fuel capacity. Uh, also going to do an S2000 fuel pump one because it's OE reliability and it fits directly in the tank and it's going to need a little bit more fuel. I'm not sure of what fuel pump the VX has. It's always better to 
have more fuel capacity than needed. So this is the first time I think this back seat has been out in a long time. And of course, there's all kinds of good stuff down here. Uh, UEG guys uh, are spoiled because your fuel pump is right here. Pull the seat up, four screws, few tens, fuel pump is there. Give you an idea, this is the CX pump. This is the S2000 pump. So there might actually not be a difference, but again, it's better to be safe. Than sorry. Yep, one more time. Yep, we're good. Fluids are in, coolant is in. We're leaving the intake off right now because we're doing the wiring for the O2 sensor. Let me go ahead and connect. We'll hit the key. All right. I think that engine has been in 50 pieces. Yeah. That is literally the first hit of the key. I mean, I know I'm confident building it, but it's still pretty much amazing that it did that. Everything sounds really nice. Not getting any temperature now. It, yeah. it does have a new thermostat, so you always want to make sure that your water is circulating. That's why we do one of our buckets right here. You know, squeeze it. Make sure we get all the air out. Like I said, it's pretty amazing that this engine was completely stripped down to nothing, clean, rebuilt, put back together, and it started first hit. I'm not acting surprised, I'm still just genuinely happy that it did that, really. Well, it's always good to just have something in pieces and then just work the next time you start it again. Uh, we have an error code. Cylinder position sensor, code number nine. So we just replaced the whole OBD2 distributor because it's actually cheaper than trying to find the individual parts. It's just common with the older distributor these days. Unfortunately, there is quite a few aftermarket units that work very well. On the dyno, this is the second pole. The first one was just to make sure everything was good, so it's gonna be a little rich. But I wanna share the sound of this. Nothing sounds like a VTEC. B series motor, especially going into VTEC. You guys are gonna hear a pull on this car. I'm gonna record it. Ready? Alright, George. That is how a VTEC changeover should sound. Nothing sounds like a B motor. Nothing. That is perfect. So this one is pretty much done. This is a fantastic sounding B motor. This is what Honda is all about. This is what we call the OG VTEC B series sound. So this is essentially a slightly high compression type R motor. The bolt-ons are Skunk 2 2 to 2 cams, alpha springs and titanium retainers. They're Skunk 2 LMAs. The Skunk 2 4 2 into 1 alpha version 2 header it gives it the best ground clearance. Very, very OE kind of header. And then a cut up an intake manifold, a slightly cool air intake that we built. Of course, the high flow cat keeps that smell out of it. And of course, it makes power, as you just saw. And then the Revel exhaust. So now it's done. Let's get it back to the other shop. We're going to finish putting on the new valve cover. He has a new steering wheel and a couple of other things. And we'll get some outside shots. But guys, what do you think of the sound of this? Is Give it in the comments. Let me know what you think, you old school B-Series Honda guys. Go ahead and comment below. Tell me what you think of the sound. This is the last time you're going to see the cam gears now. We can put the side cover on there and the new valve cover. He supplied new uh, rubber grommets, gasket and tube seals, and these nuts too. These used to be chrome back in the day, and I think the new ones are now like a kind of a brushed nickel. Be interested to see what they look like, but it's going to be look a lot cleaner under there anyway. This is our tune-in valve cover. Obviously, the sides are cut. Uh, we already used his first gasket kit on this, and it came with the gasket and the tube seals. It didn't come with a grommet, so we're just going to leave this one on here because 
replacing it for one if it leaks. We're gonna have to do it twice. Plus, it's kind of like a nice little uh, gasket for our tune and valve cover in the future. Hell yeah. All right, there she is. New valve cover, everything looks clean, beautiful. This is what a B-Series is all about right here. Red valve cover, bright gold shiny header, 202 wheel horsepower. All right, we're doing a steering wheel in the red Civic on the lift. It's a VTI steering wheel, which is non-airbag steering wheel, which means you need to take out the clock spring and need to get the correct adapter for the Honda horn, which they did have them in these models. If you see this hole here and this hole here, that actually is designed to hold a flat metal strap that would touch the back of the steering wheel there to connect to the horn button. Well, we don't have one of those. One wasn't supplied. I've made one out of bronze welding wire. I'm going to pick up both of those screw holes. And then this is going to bend and touch the back of the steering wheel and get connected with that wire. And all will be well. The horn will work. All right, so with the steering wheel on, you're going to want to look back in there and build it to where it has spring on it. So if you can see that there, when you pull the wheel off, it should kind of pull the way. And then when you put the wheel back on, it should touch first before the wheel's bottomed out so that you know that it's applying pressure to your switch. Hopefully you can see that well enough. I'm gonna pull this off. And that's what it looks like. If you need more pressure, you can just take that air, pull it out a little bit, and then that way it's got some spring to it when the steering wheel pushes against it. But that is the new ground for the horn. Make sure that you use some dielectric grease the real grease on it looks just like the ultra gray but yeah use some dielectric grease on there because you want it to not make noise there's sometimes that these little tabs here when they rub the back of the steering wheel they make a little bit of noise so dielectric grease no noise there's the steering wheel installed installed so it has an srs light obviously because there's no airbag here and the upshift light would have been controlled from the vx computer basically tells it based on vacuum uh, we're just going to take it for a quick drive, see where the wheel is, make sure it's straight. If not, it's pretty easy. We'll just have to pop that H out. Uh, looks like it's quite a bit off. Let's get it a little bit straighter and figure it out. Uh, you can actually reach it behind that. Once you pull that H off, there's a hole there. Uh, the alignment's kind of wishy-washy. Obviously, the car is lowered now. It's going to need an alignment. We're going to talk to him about his brakes. Uh, we flush the brakes to make them work better. But it really could use updated brakes. Uh, I'd probably recommend go with GSR fronts and uh, GSR uh, discs for the back, which will put a package together if he wants that. That would be the best way to go rather than wasting money. Uh, pads and rotors on this setup. The first time we've had it outside with all the uh, the new wheels on it, so you can see how well it looks. Let's get some pictures of it uh, with the playing background over here, so you guys can see it. But I mean, look at this thing. That looks awesome. Like I say, you just don't see EGs like this anymore. Definitely got a pronounced VTEC. Hit the VTEC. <laughs> sounds absolutely incredible. From the front coming towards you, unbelievable how much VTEC change. It's like the cam is three times bigger in, on the VTEC lobe than the small lobe. I won't talk while we're doing all this stuff over here. So we're gonna get pictures here. 
definitely sounds freaking radical. Sounds absolutely terrific. All right, this looks like a good spot right here. Yeah, we're gonna turn yeah. around, we'll get over there. Yeah, water in the background, dude fishing. Yeah, West Field. Two, the duplex. It does have something in the back of that car. What the heck is that? Washing machine? Small fridge is my guess. <laughs> Last minute change, he wants this to in uh, satin black. So, car is done, it's tuned, everything's ready to go. We're gonna give this to our good friend Talon. He is gonna coat it satin black. We'll put it back on and then we will deliver the car. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll put the picture in the end, what it looks like. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget, enjoy your cars. Thank you.